this week we are going to turn our attention onto broodmare sires and we want to talk about how we find our champion at Tullock Lodge. So last weekend we continued our unbelievable streak with our two-year-olds. We took out the group three Canterbury Stakes with Frost and we also took out the group three Wooden Stakes with Lady of Camelot. Um, and last week we were in New Zealand and Bruce Slade had a very interesting conversation with uh, John Thompson, the stud master at Rich Hill Stud, and he talked to Bruce about the importance he places on broodmare sires. And we, when we look back on our two two-year-old winners from last weekend, we saw that Northern Meteor was the broodmare sire of Prost and Fastnet Rock was the broodmare sire of Lady of Camelot. So we wanted this week to give you some insight into the emphasis our team places on broodmare sires. So turning to you, Gay, what do you look for in a yearling and how important is it for you that they have uh, one of these champion broodmare sires on the page? I think it's essential, Emma. And over the, the last three decades, the champions that I've been able to purchase out of the, the sales uh, ring have all had great mares. And the great mares have got either daddies or granddaddies that have been champion sires. And when I look at the page, after I've seen the horse, I look for is, what's the mother doing and what she buy. And is she buy, you know, reduced choice or a fast net rock, a horse that you know has already proven it. Certain sires just keep throwing a champion horses. I'm invincible is exactly that type of sire. And it's interesting with our two-year-olds this year, the remarkable success we're having. And when you look at their pages, you can see exactly why. Yeah, Gay, it's certainly um, uh, very interesting when you say take a, a jurisdiction for like Japan, for instance, uh, their model of breeding the, the best to the best, uh, just getting the best performed horses all around the world um, and continuing to breed them and strengthen their breed. So it comes as no surprise that uh, I guess these horses out of the best bred mares by the best bred stallions are producing the best horses. And, and no doubt it's something what we target uh, when we go to the yearling sales. Um, you certainly like to see some of those traits that, that may be coming through those uh, particular particular sire lines in, in, in sort of various sides of the family. Uh, I, I must say when uh, when they're in, once they're in the yard and, and, and the training doesn't necessarily affect your training and how you approach them. Sometimes you sort of forget what they may be out of and, and what sort of lineage is there. But it is interesting to, to sort of go back and uh, do what Bruce has done and sort of analyse the sort of crop as a whole and, and see where our success is coming from and, and sort of looking back through that model that we've seen, uh, you know, the best bred, uh, whether it be cold or filly out of the, the well-bred mares and, and the right the right sire lines there uh, that have proven successful time and time again in Australia, it certainly comes as, as no surprise. Yeah, for sure. And just taking a look at our sort of slipper chances, Emma, Gay, Adrian, you know, our top 10 chances in the slipper, uh, two of them out of Fastnet Rock Mares, champion sire, two out of Snitzel Mares, champion sire, one out of Vinnie Mare, champion sire, Lonro Street Cry, Northern Meteor, O'Reilly. So, um, you know, just... Broodmare size, just with no weak chinks at all, top size in their own rights. And of course, you know, makes sense. They make up, in a yearling we're looking at, I guess, they make up 25% of that yearling's genetic material. So, um, yeah, it's something um, we place a lot of emphasis on. It's something that's shone through in our uh, two-year-old results this season. And we thought we might um, touch on four yearlings that uh, we have shares available and that are out of, out of these sort of mares that profile just like the two-year-olds we have leading our slipper charge um kicking off with you gay i thought we'd talk about the written tycoon so far away philly uh she was purchased from yulong of course out of a schnitzel mare just like fully lit and just like chateau miraval who will see debut next week she's exactly a speed philly just like those two horses chateau miraval still has to be seen on the racetrack but her trial was brilliant and this fully lit, he just scorched the, the track the other day when he won his race. He's the favourite for the Millennium on Saturday, and he'll be extremely hard to beat. And the wonderful thing about the written tycoon filly is, of course, it's the same sire as Lady of Camelot, who won the, the Widden Stakes brilliantly, cracking the, the, the clock on Saturday. I, I think she's a no-brainer. She's a beautiful filly. Yulong is one of the great studs of Australia, nothing spared. Everything's there for the horses, growth and benefit. Yeah, big push this filly, Gay. She's been broken in. She's, of course, um, bought in conjunction with Emirates Park, uh, Brian Carlson, uh, the Lutar family. They know how to pick 
uh, these these fillies at the sales as well. They've had a lot of success, obviously, winning a slipper with Esther Jab. She was by Snitzel. This mare's mo- this filly's mother is by Snitzel. And they also purchased Moss Fund to win the Golden Slipper. She was by Mossman, but she also was out of a Snitzel mare. So um, a lot of tie-ins here to a success and uh, just 25% left in her. Emma, let's talk now about the Farnan Colt and a reprimand. Of course, we're a huge rap on Farnan, uh, Farnan's first crop. Um, this cult out of an I'm Invincible mare, just like Straight Charge. Yes, yeah, so we're obviously very bullish to purchase the stock of Gay and Adrian's Golden Slipper win in Farnan at the sales. And we were delighted to secure this cult for 375000 from the draft of Telemont Thoroughbreds. So the mare is a full sister to multiple group winner Fiesta um, and is out of an I'm Invincible mare, just like our very own Straight Charge. And then not a single doubt, Sireline crossed with I'm Invincible actually boasts a strike rate of 100% winners to runners. So ticking all these boxes, we were absolutely delighted to secure him for the price that we did. And one big thing that Gay always goes on about with her early tier old types is that they are early foals. And this guy is a September foal. So if you're looking for an early tier old type, this guy has everything you need. And there's only 10% available in him. Yeah, late pullout. So 10% has become available Check out his breaking in video. This guy can move, getting a big rap from the break already. So uh, just 10%, you have to be quick there. Adrian, we waited deep into the sale. We had won the Magic Millions. Uh, there was lots to celebrate, but we didn't go home or didn't uh, head off to the party until we had secured the microphone cult out of Mirror Mare. Of course, she is an O'Reilly Mare, and we have Trunk out of an O'Reilly Mare who's set to run a big race in the English Millennium on Saturday. Yeah, plenty of discipline to, to stay there and secure this cult. Um, and I think it's going to be well worth the, the wait and certainly play dividends for us. Lovely athletic type. Um, he's son of Microphone, who's um, yet to prove himself. Uh, it's very early days, only his sort of second crop coming through here now. But um, a son of Exceed and Excel, who's um, renowned for producing top-class juveniles, um, I would say unlucky not to be winning the Golden Slipper himself um, again, the importance we place on, on on size in terms of winning the Golden Slipper. So he's um, certainly got that level of, of ability and talent there. Um, but yeah, nice athletic individual and, and out of an O'Reilly man, as you said, we've had plenty of success, not um, you know, not just Trunk over, over many years and even the progeny of O'Reilly, we've had a lot of success as well. Uh, but I, I think that, that cross of uh, a bit of speed um, through that, stamina um, in, in what O'Reilly can provide gives you a really versatile style to horse. But again, um, proven through the likes of Trunk, he's already produced himself um, as an early two-year-old type uh, and racing for $2 million on Saturday. They can get you early runners. So I'd certainly expect that with this particular type of horse. Yeah, I think we're paying a lot more for microphones uh, in 12 months' time. He's a great price for one of the best-looking colts in the sale. So have a good look at him, the microphone, Mirror Mare Colt. Uh, finally, Gay, we thought we'd discuss the fast net rock Archangel Philly from Coolmore. She is out of a Lonro mare, just like Shangri-La Express. And of course, she is by fast net rock herself, uh, a filly with nice residual value, given what these fast net rock mares are doing. Gay produced a Storm Boy and Lady of Camelot so far this season. Well, I wasn't going to leave the sale without her. I thought she was a gorgeous filly. She moved very freely. She had a lovely presence about herself. She's by Australasia's champion stallion. And you're not going to get many more of them because he's now retired. So I, I think she's just a fabulous acquisition to have in your broodmare or your Phillies band. Definitely be looking at her. Definitely be putting your hand in your pocket and buying a share of her. Very good, Gay. Well, for more information on these four youngs we've profiled here today, please do reach out to our Bloodstock team. Claudia, Emma Coleman, myself, uh, or of course, Gay and Adrian, please do reach out if you've got, uh, would like some more information and we can help you from there.